Today's lesson is a timely look at the history of timekeeping. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger. Hello, I'm Kiki. And today we're going to be talking about timekeeping, keeping track of the time. We kind of take it for granted nowadays. If we want to know what time it is, we look at our phone, we look at our watch. But this wasn't always the case, was it? That's right. Back in the olden days, before all this modern technology, we didn't have the easiest way to find out what time it is. Farmers they needed to look at the positioning of the sun to find out what time of the day it is. But now you're right. We really take it for granted, and sometimes I think some kids don't even know how to tell time anymore. That's possible. I guess some people don't know how to read an analog clock. They're used to watching digital clocks. I don't believe that, but still, yes, keeping track of time is important in modern society. So let's not take it for granted, and let's find out about the history of timekeeping. We're taking a timely look at the history of timekeeping. It's time to begin our lesson by introducing this topic to you in the. The first paragraph. A timely look at the history of timekeeping. Before modern timekeeping devices were invented, people used various systems to keep track of the passage of time. Let's journey back through history to examine some of them. 大家好，首先来看第一部分中的片语 ，keep track of something 或是 somebody。它是追踪点点点、掌握点点点或是记录点点点的意思。例如 ，I keep track of my spending by making a note of everything I buy。我透过记下买的所有东西来追踪我的支出。或者是 ，The police kept track of the murder suspect。警方追踪谋杀案的嫌疑犯。Okay, so the title says it's a timely look at the history of timekeeping. It's kind of clever here. The word "timely" means at the appropriate time, at a useful time. I could say, for example, my friend gave me some timely advice. And therefore, I was able to sell my stocks before they fell in price. So that was timely advice. It was very useful at the time it was given. Now let's take a look at our first paragraph. Before modern timekeeping devices were invented, people used various systems to keep track of the passage of time. Let's journey back through history to examine some of them. So we know that in modern day, we have lots of different ways to tell time. We have our phones, we have our digital watches, and we have analog clocks, digital clocks—all types of ways to tell time. But that wasn't so back in the old days. In the olden days, they had other systems to keep track. Of the passage of time, so they had other ways to tell what time of the day it was. Right. Of course, we can imagine people living a long time ago. They observed the patterns of day and night, and they realized that well, the day lasts about as long as the night. And、uh, of course, there are different times during the day, but we don't actually have a way to indicate what time it is, or to you know know if it's morning or afternoon or whatever. So of course, they use different kinds of ways, different. Systems to keep track of the passage of time. So, if you keep track of something, you keep tabs on something, you monitor that thing, and indeed, you do want to know what time it is. Especially nowadays, if you're going to school or if you're going to work, you need to know whether you're going to be on time or whether you're going to be late. Let's journey back through history to examine some of them. So, let's take a look back in history. Let's go back in time and see what are some other ways to keep track of.、Time. Time. Let's do that. Let's listen now to the second part of our lesson, and we'll come back to discuss it. Modern timekeeping arguably began with the invention of the sundial in ancient Egypt. Essentially, a stick mounted on the center of a circular plate, the sundial marked time with the stick's shadow, which changed with the sun's shifting position in the sky. Although simple and handy. Sundials had the disadvantage of requiring sunlight to function. This issue was bypassed by the invention of the water clock. These clocks measure time according to changing levels of water inside a container. During the Middle Ages, Christian monks developed mechanical clocks to keep an eye on daily church activities. 
While these clocks work well for purposes like keeping time for church services, they weren't reliable enough for general use. But in 1656, Dutch scientist Christian Huygens invented the more accurate pendulum clock, which became widely used for scheduling daily life. Oliver is arguably the best athlete in our school, and he plays on three different teams. Oliver ChatGPT is arguably the most popular topic in recent months. ChatGPT I have an LED headlight mounted on my bicycle's handlebars. There is a beautiful sapphire mounted on this ring. circular. We followed a circular path around the mountain. 我们沿着一条环山的路径前进。下一个介绍动词 shift 这个字的意思是移动、改变或是转移。在课文中，我现在分词做形容词用，表示移动的。例如， astronomers have been observing the asteroid's shifting position to see if it may get close to Earth. 天文学家一直在观察那颗小行星的移动位置，看它是否可能会靠近地球。或是。the workers spent three days shifting boxes from the boat to the company storage unit. Developers bypassed local regulations through their business connections. 建商透过生意上的人脉规避地方法规。又或者说, the shortcut bypassed the area of the highway where maintenance work is being performed. Okay, so let's talk about timekeeping, especially modern timekeeping or keeping track of the time. It began with the invention of the sundial in ancient Egypt. Okay, so of course, Egypt is a country in Africa. And if we talk about ancient Egypt, we usually think about the pharaohs and the pyramids and things like that. So a long time ago in Egypt, they started using the sundial. However, at the beginning of our sentence, it says that modern timekeeping arguably began with the invention of the sundial in ancient Egypt. So this fact that our modern timekeeping technology, or the sundial, started in Egypt. Now, what does arguably mean? Arguably means that it is something that can be discussed by multiple parties that have different opinions. So some people might agree that Egypt was the first inventors of modern day timekeeping, but there are others who think otherwise. Right. So argue, of course, to argue as a verb means to state an opinion about something and then you back it up with evidence or other ideas that support your position and arguably makes it an adverb here and that just means it could be argued that this is the case. Someone might state that this is the case. For example, I could say Tom is arguably the best CEO this company has ever had. So yes, indeed, most people agree that it began with the sundial in ancient Egypt. Essentially, or basically, a stick mounted on the center of a circular plate. The sundial marks time with the stick's shadow, which changed with the sun's shifting position in the sky. So this is how a sundial worked. First of all, you had a stick, which is something long and thin and hard, and it was mounted at the center of a circular plate. And then they probably had numbers and an arc or something. So as the sun 
moved across the sky, or as it tracked across the sky, the shadow would shift on that dial. So to shift just means to change from one position to another. They often tell us that when we're taking a flight somewhere. Be careful with your luggage in the overhead bin because your luggage may have shifted during the flight. And basically, how the sundial was made was by mounting a stick on a circular plate. So when you mount something, it's basically to place or fix an object and to stick it somewhere or to place it somewhere permanently. Okay, so for example, you might mount your photo or mount a painting on the wall, and the sundial. Was created by mounting a stick on a circular plate. So a circular or a round-shaped plate, and that will be the bottom of the sundial with the numbers marked on it. And then the stick that's mounted on the plate will have the shadows showing what time it is, depending on the time of the day. Right. So circular makes the word circle an adjective. So it's a circular plate. If it's a rectangle, you could say it's rectangular. If it's a triangle, you could say it's triangular. You get the idea. And of course, we had that stick mounted on the center of this circular plate, and then the shadow would、uh, indicate the time. And it would change with the sun's shifting position in the sky. You could also say it's changing position in the sky. And the next sentence says, although simple and handy, sundials had the disadvantage of requiring sunlight to function. So the sundial was simple; it didn't require any moving parts. You didn't need to manufacture it in a factory, so it was simple. It was also handy, which means it was useful. But、uh, their disadvantage was that you could not use them when it was cloudy. They required sunlight to work or to function. This issue was bypassed by the invention of the water clock. So the problem with the sundial is that you needed the sun in order for it to work. So the issue was bypassed, or to get past, or to go around this problem, or sometimes to skip something. To solve this problem, they invented the water clock. And these clocks measured time according to changing levels of water inside a container. And what's a container? A container is basically an object or a device to hold or transport something from one place to another. And in this case, the water clock has a container where it holds water. To tell time. Right. So they got around the problem of the sundial not being able to work on cloudy days. They bypassed that problem. They got past it by inventing the water clock. I've never seen a water clock before, but、uh, they probably worked fairly well. But I suspect they weren't very accurate. They just gave you a rough idea of what time it was. Now, during the Middle Ages, Christian monks developed mechanical clocks to keep an eye on daily church activities. So the monks they know that their church they have a lot of activities going on, which means that they need a way to tell time accurately, so their believers will know when to come to church to do their activities. So they developed a mechanical clock, and mechanical is basically something that is operated by machine or machine. Machinery and mechanical clocks usually have lots of different gears and springs and a whole system to make the whole thing work. So the monks created this mechanical clock to keep an eye on. When you keep an eye on something, you are keeping something under observation. So you want to follow. Something's progression, or you want to make sure that you don't miss something. So in this case, there are lots of church activities going on, so they need to keep an eye on what's happened at different times of the day. Right to keep an eye on daily church activities, to keep track of those church activities, so that people would know when to come for a church service, usually on a Sunday morning. So again, they developed these mechanical clocks, and I should mention that nowadays. 
If you want to buy an expensive watch, they're usually mechanical, or more specifically, they are automatic. They're self-winding, but still, they are mechanical, like watches by Rolex or by Breitling or these various companies. They're probably going to be mechanical and they're going to be very expensive, but they're not going to be as accurate as the quartz watches manufactured by, say, Seiko or Citizen. Okay, moving on now. The next sentence says, "While these clocks worked well for purposes like keeping time for church services, they weren't reliable enough for general use." So, while these clocks worked well, it was true that they worked well enough for purposes like keeping time for church services, but they weren't reliable enough for general use. People could not use these mechanical clocks outside the church. They just weren't accurate enough, so you couldn't schedule business meetings with these clocks. Some people would be early, some people would be late, and you'd lose the deal in a situation like that. But in 1656, Dutch scientist Christian Huygens invented the more accurate pendulum clock, which became widely used for scheduling daily life. So, because the mechanical clocks they weren't accurate for general use, people would be late. A Dutch scientist he created something else, and it was the pendulum clock. And what is a pendulum? A pendulum is basically something that moves in motion back and forth, and As long as you keep this action going, it will keep swinging a certain way. So the pendulum clock became widely used. More people started to use this pendulum clock to schedule their daily life. They relied on this pendulum clock to decide what time they were going to do something or when they were going to meet someone. And pendulum clocks are still popular these days. Of course, the grandfather clock that you might have in your home is a pendulum clock. It's not really necessary to have a clock that big, but it is a nice piece of furniture, and it's fun to watch that pendulum swing back and forth to keep track of the time. And yes, indeed, it was widely used to schedule daily life, to schedule those business meetings, to know when to get to school, etc., etc. Well, now let's move on to the final paragraph for today. We'll listen to it first. Finally, 1927 saw the creation of the highly precise quartz clock. Based on the vibrations of a quartz crystal in an electrical circuit, the clock is used in most computers to this day. The second part, we see the word vibration. It is a noun, which means vibration or vibration. For example, I could feel the vibration from the engines while I sat on the plane. 在坐飞机时，我可以感受到引擎的震动。又或者说 ，When Vera turned on the washing machine, the vibration made a loud noise. Vera 启动洗衣机时发出很大的震动声响。最后介绍片语 to this day， 表示直到今日或是到现在。例如 ，My cousin moved to Russia before I was born, and to this day I still had never met him. 我表哥在我出生前就搬到俄罗斯去了，直到今天我都还没见过他。再看一个例子 ，My computer is ten years old and it still works to this day. 我的电脑已经满十年了，到现在还可以用。Okay, so here it says in the final paragraph. Finally, 1927 saw the creation of the highly precise quartz clock. It's very precise. Okay, it doesn't gain a lot of time. It doesn't lose a lot of time. It does sort of. Okay, some quartz clocks or quartz watches may gain a second or two every week or so, but that's still much more accurate, much more precise than pendulum clocks. And to be precise is to be able to be more accurate or to To be exact, and sometimes when somebody is precise, they are very careful about details. Based on the vibrations of a quartz crystal in an electrical circuit, the clock is used in most computers to this day. So, a quartz crystal they have vibration in itself. 
And basically, a vibration is the shaking movement of something. Okay, so different states of matter, for example, water, solid, and gases, their molecules will vibrate differently. And in this case, quartz crystal, they have their own level of vibration. And when you put it in an electrical circuit, it is a good conductor of electricity that it will allow this electrical system to work accurately. And this quartz crystal is very precise, and it's quite accurate that the clock is used in most computers to this day. So to this day basically just means that at the present time, up to now, people are still using it just because it's so accurate. Interesting. I thought、uh, the quartz crystal was used in timekeeping much later than that, but、uh, it seems that it's been around for quite some time. It's been around almost for a hundred years, and again, we're talking about using a quartz crystal. A crystal is kind of a mineral; it has regular patterns. You use crystals in a lot of things, and of course, some people buy crystal to have,、uh, you know, exquisite glassware or things like that.、The、crystal glasses, etc. They can be quite expensive. So, yes, they do use a quartz crystal in this electrical circuit. And that makes clocks and watches and things in your computer extremely reliable, extremely accurate. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes Hanny. <音楽>各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第二部分提到，在中世纪时，基督教修道士开发了机械钟。那下一句写道，尽管这些时钟对于像是为了做礼拜计时这样的目的而言，效果很好，但是在一般用途却不够可靠。好，那文中他用到 while 来表达尽管的语义。我们来整理一下 while 当连接词的不同意思。好，第一个我们可以用 while 去表达虽然、尽管，那么意思就会跟 though 或是 although。一样用来引导让步副词子句，像是 While the car is old, it's still in good condition. 尽管这辆车子旧了，但它的车况还是很好。那注意句子里面只能用一个连接词，所以我们不要受到中文的影响，再加上 but 去表达但是的语义。像 while, though, although, but 这些连接词，我们选一个来用就可以喽。好，那么第二个可以表达的语义是而然而，那这时候 while 是用来连接两个对比或不同的陈述，意思相当于 whereas。举例来说 ，While Ben enjoys sci-fi movies, his girlfriend prefers rom-coms. Ben 喜欢看科幻电影。而他的女朋友比较喜欢浪漫喜剧片。好，那第三个我们可以用 while 去表达 during the time that， 也就是在什么期间与什么同时的那种意思。那是用来引导时间副词子句。举例来说 ，The phone rang while he was taking a shower。他洗澡时电话响了。那补充一下 ，while 当这个意思来解释时，如果连接的两个子句主词一样。我们可以省略 while 后方的主词，然后把动词改分词。也就是说啊 ，while 引导的副词子句会被简化成 while 加上现在分词 v i n g， 或是加上过去分词 p p。那动词原本是主动，我们就用现在分词 v i n g； 被动的话，就是直接保留这个过去分词 p p 就可以了。例如 ，He likes to sing while taking a shower。他喜欢在洗澡时唱歌。好，那我们读到课文第三部分的第一句，他有提到说 ，Finally, 1927 saw the creation of the highly precise quartz clock. 最后，一九二七年见证了高度精确的时音钟的问世。那这边他用到动词 see， 不是看的意思哦。see 在这边可以用来表达那种经历啊、见证，意思就跟 experience 相近。那么 see 在这个用法当中是及物动词，它的主词。词啊，通常会是事物。举例来说 ，The industry has seen enormous changes over the past two decades. 这个产业在过去二十年间经历了重大的转变。好，那么以上就是今天重点整理。我们回顾今天单词吧。Essentially, effective time management is essentially the key to balancing a busy schedule. Mount. We decided to mount the TV on the wall to save floor space. Circular. The students are sitting around a circular table for a group discussion. Shift. 
Megan shifted the furniture around to create more space in the room. Container. I put the spaghetti I didn't eat in a plastic container and stored it in the refrigerator. Mechanical. Several people were stuck inside the elevator when it had a mechanical failure. Precise. The doctor made a precise cut to begin the operation. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoy reading along with us. I am Kiki. I am Roger. See, See you, you next, next time. time.